Divine Spirit, loving Mother, Father, God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change and courage to change the things we can and also grant us wisdom to make a difference. Allow us the space to send out healing to all those names we have in our hearts and who need healing at this time. Let us carry your hope, love and joy in our own hearts and where we make that difference to others, walk with us in our hours and days ahead, guiding us and helping us in the care of ourselves. We ask all this in your name, which is always true, precious and perfect love. Amen. so very hard for you to bear. Just know that I too am missing you. I remember your entry into the world and what a gift you were. You were the most wonderful and wanted child. Your smile, your laughter, you brought sunshine into my life. As you grew, your thoughtfulness also grew. You will live in my heart forever. I want you to remember me with joy in your heart and to think of all the great things that we shared. You were my child and I cherished every living moment that I had with you. I want you to know that I still walk with you. I try to steer you on the pathway that's right. Never doubt that I love you the woman that you have become and I am so very proud of you there still will be moments of sadness when you will shed a tear but cry you must for each tear is a jewel a jewel of memories you were my precious jewel my diamond which shone with rays of kindness rays of love and rays of hope. I bless the day you were born and know how lucky I was to have such a daughter as you. Carry on with your life and fulfill all your dreams. Know that I shall be watching. Know the pride that fills my heart as you accomplish many things. 
now you must go on and be proud of yourself. Maybe someday you will come to realize that, yes, you are your mother's daughter. You may come to find that there are many similarities there. Never fear, for I shall be the one who often holds your hand, who often calls your name in the sweet stillness of the night. Embrace life, my darling, and give it your all, knowing that I shall be so happy for you. Know that I live on in you, and that together we can face the world with a smile. I'm there. Just call and listen. I'm there, my darling. I'm there. Hello, good morning and welcome to this address for Edinburgh Association of Spiritualists. I'm so grateful that I can join you today here from my living room in Lancashire and I'm so grateful for the way that um, we are able to connect to our family and our friends through the World Wide Web, through the internet, through the telephone. It really is a saving grace at this time and we really have come closer together, even though miles may keep us apart. The separation that we're currently experiencing, like nothing we've ever had to experience before um, in our current understanding, except for those of the older generation who have lived through war times where there was um, difficulties that we can't imagine. This is the first time that we have had to go into this quarantine period and it's brought with it many revelations, many new ways of thinking, new ways of thinking about our home, our health, our family, what are our wants, are they important, what are our needs, how many things do we really need, how many um, privileges do we have that we haven't take that we have taken for granted how many people in our life have we perhaps taken for granted that they will always be there within reach that we will always be able to reach our arms to them to hug them as spiritualists we recognize that change is essential and that we understand the greatest change from life, this life, into the next life, the next stage of life through death is um, is only change and it's not the end. And on a smaller scale here in our daily lives we are experiencing that <clears throat> in so many different ways because we are now being made to really think long and hard about all the ways that our lives were being lived before that now while we can't do them, we consider whether we really need them, want them, and where changes can be made. Change isn't always easy for people. And certainly being separated from the people that are your support network, or the people that you go to for a hug, or the people that help look after your children, or the people that um, make you laugh, that you work with, that keep you sane. Being separated for, from them can be very, very hard for, for us. <clears throat> and it's made us consider, I think, also, the people in our society who we have been separate from, perhaps emotionally, who we don't really understand. The saying of, walk a mile in a man's shoes before you can understand them, it's really become um, a part of our understanding now that people who have previously before COVID-19 been isolated, who have been lonely, who have felt themselves separate from society or family or friends, perhaps the elderly, the infirm, those who have vulnerabilities, who can't get out so easily, the homeless, those who have addictions, who find themselves sometimes um, apart from others. As we consider how their lives are when they don't see people regularly, 
when perhaps they only have somebody who does their shopping or goes to the chemist for them once a week or a fortnight. How truly lonely that can be. And in fact, our society has a great many number of people who lived like that before this period. Hopefully, as we move forward, we'll remember our personal experience of isolation and our separation and it will increase in our um, empathy and our community with one another. Certainly here in my own community, I have seen many, many acts of caring and charity and support. I've seen people do shopping for one another. I've seen people um, work together to deliver meals, um, to support where, you know, there's vulnerabilities to help people getting to and from appointments and medicines and you know it really is a wonderful thing to see love in action and it gives us hope it gives us hope that we can get through this difficult time and that we can perhaps take this new new understanding of helping one another more regularly forward into our lives ahead our hearts are really with those who work so hard in the front line of this illness and those who are losing loved ones at this time and family who are suffering. For them, they truly have no respite. They, they cannot stop. They have to keep going on. Life keeps moving forward and they find themselves on a, a daily treadmill of anxiety and fear. And, um, and I really hope that in some ways that we can bolster those who are working the hardest for our nation at this time and for our family of humanity. It's said that change is inevitable, but growth is optional. Change is a part of daily life, but as this change has been imposed upon us and we've had to stop and take stock of where in our life we perhaps needed other change because now we have time sometimes to think perhaps not if you have a, a busy full-time job working from home at this moment and children to look after you may feel like you have less time to stop and pause and breathe than you did before but certainly the changes in our circumstances have given us um, space to reflect Reflect on what was working well for us and what wasn't working for us in our life before. Because we were very busy before or there's a culture of busyness and fast paced life that we're in in society now. So as it's all been upended, now it's a time for us to, to observe what was working for us and what wasn't. Change brings with it grief, however, and grief comes in so many ways. Grief we expect or generally think of it as in being experienced when we're losing our loved ones. We can grieve them as they pass, before they die even. We can grieve and we certainly grieve them after they're gone. We can grieve the end of a job. We can grieve the lost opportunities. We can grieve for a relationship that's broken down. Grief is something that will touch us all in some way or another. And the emotions that come with it are something I'd like to reflect upon at this time. You know, there are all of the range of emotions of human experience come along with grief. There could be anger, great anger, that we've had to lose this situation or our loved one. Depression. We can perhaps try and bargain that things could have been different or perhaps we can change things so that we don't lose the situation that may be coming ahead. 
it was it was re it was said that there was five stages roughly of grief that people can go through at any time they can they're not linear um they are um denial anger bargaining depression and and some say then there's an acceptance in, in time of the situation some people would say that acceptance is very very difficult for them especially when there's a real tragic loss and that is something that I want to consider here as well because acceptance is something that we as spiritualists have within our hearts and our minds the ability to to reach in a way that I could say is perhaps slightly easier no medium is immune to grief, no spiritualist is immune to grief. But our knowledge and our shared experience of the communion of spirit and the ministry of those who've gone before us, the evidence that they have shared with us and the knowings that we have experienced as they've touched our hearts and our minds and our lives with their direct communication of life after life has given us it's like a salve for the soul. It's given us hope. It's given us knowing of there is no finality in death. There is no forever gone. There is only a see you later, you could say. And so nothing is gone forever. Everything changes into new form. It may not be the same as it was, but there is always a new beginning that follows a change or an end and that's what we need to kind of focus on at this time I feel the hope of a new beginning and whichever way that comes for you the the feeling of this too shall pass and we are weathering a very difficult storm and for some of us we've lost our loved ones through this storm and for some of us We've lost jobs and for some of us, we've lost hopes and dreams. But there will be a chance again as we progress onwards always for there to be new beginnings, new opportunities and new ways of relationship. And our loved ones will be with us, guiding us, guarding us and loving us from the spirit side if they have had to go to the next stage of life. There was a gentleman called Viktor Frankl who has written a book called Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl was a survivor of Auschwitz and he was in other concentration camps and he was a trained psychiatrist and he recognised that those who had a strength of spirit to look for shared experience, to look for small joys, to look for hope, to not allow themselves to become broken or a victim of circumstances, had greater will to live, had greater mood and opportunity to find small meaning in difficult circumstances. And we've seen in our, our culture today where a lot of people have rebelled against these these current um, restrictions that we're facing. Some people feel like they're being told what to do or that they're in, in a prison almost in their own home and th that they don't like this. And yet we're very fortunate to be able to step back, most of us, um, in good health and to do this for the benefit of others. And really it is a matter of um, perspective as with everything in life, there is a matter of perspective that enables the human spirit not only to survive, but to thrive. And I believe it's our personal responsibility that as spiritualists, as we sit in this power and this knowledge of spirit, of life eternal, and we find time and space within our day to, to sit in the quiet and to commune with our own spirit through meditation, to sit in the power of our spirit and to share that in prayer for others. 
that we become a living example of this, that we step forward and that we share hope. And as we do this sitting in our own power, we fill up our own cup and therefore we're able to serve. We're able to serve our families. We're able to serve our community. We're able to serve where we're called upon to do so, whether that is virtually or whether that's in person. We can help in small ways, but in meaningful ways. And we can help others to understand that where there seems to be despair and a dark night, that there is always light and that there will always be something more to come where we can look for the meaning and look for the hope and look for the shared love and the shared experience of life which will always go on albeit in different ways in different times and with different people sometimes but the bond of love can never be broken and I'll leave these thoughts with you. Thank you for listening. Take a moment for yourself Find somewhere that you can rest Close your eyes and visualize Glowing bowl